But there's another interesting part of this whole this whole eating for your genetics and for your lineage, okay? So I'm going to take you all back here for uh, a couple generations where there was a doctor by the name of Dr. Francis Pottinger. And so in the 1930s, this crazy-ass doctor, I'm sure I've talked about this on this podcast before, it's in my opinion one of the most fascinating studies that's been done in the field of health that you don't hear about unless you're like into this kind of ancestral paleo health movement. And what this dude did, he was a scientist, he lived on a farm and you know, he was interested in like the, the diets of cats. I forget exactly how he got into this study, but he was interested in like the diets of cats and like why some cats, you know, had all of their, faculties and why some cats started over time to kind of lose some of their faculties. And so what he did is he did these experiments where he took these cats and he basically separated them into different groups where he fed them different diets. So, you know, you had the control of like the perfect, the perfect cat diet, which was pretty much, you know, you had a group of cats that got raw meat and raw milk, raw animal meat, raw milk as their diet, okay? Um, obviously, that's not what people feed their cats for the most part. I don't even know if most cats get fed in a proper arrangement because most cats I see are just running around the neighborhood. Um, I don't know if people actually even put, like, milk out for cats anymore. I know that was, like, a thing that was going on back in the Dizay, but I don't know if it happens anymore. But then what he did is he took other cats and started giving them different diets and he kind of like, you know, spliced it up. So some cats got raw meat and then processed milk and then some cats got uh, cooked meat and raw milk and some cats got uh, processed cooked meat and processed milk, basically pasteurized milk. All right. And then what he did was he noticed the differences in all these different groups. And what he noticed was that the cats who got the raw meat and the raw milk, basically the, you know, the, the standard cat diet, the appropriate cat diet, those cats were on their game. They were healthy. You know, they could, uh, they could reproduce fine. They had no fertility problems. They had no, uh, problems with their fur, anything like that. But the other cats, as you started getting a little bit more into the denatured foods, the other cats started having some crazy reactions. Like some cats started getting like kind of skittish. You know, some cats reflection, uh, reflex time went down. Like, you know, they would throw the cats. <laughs> they throw the cats around. Granted, you couldn't do these experiments anymore because PETA would have a conniption over this. You know, if they saw, you can go on to YouTube and find just YouTube Pottinger's cats and you'll see these videos where, you know, they, they're videoing the cats and they're kind of throwing them. And, you know, cats are supposed to land on their feet, but, you know, the cats who got the, the appropriate diet, they perfectly landed on their feet. But then you had the cats, as they started getting into the more denatured processed foods, the ref, their reflex time was slower. Some cats weren't completely landing on their feet. And then the cats who got the cooked meat and the pasteurized milk, the fully denatured diet, these cats' reflex time was the slowest. The cats became very skittish. The cats were sleeping more. They didn't have as much energy. So they noticed that the effects of diet took place immediately within the same generation. So the cats that were eating the shit food, they were already feeling the effects of the shit food. But then where the observations start to get real profound was in the subsequent generations of the cat. So the cat's offspring, the kids of the cats, the kittens, who then grew into their own cats, what, the, what Pottinger observed was that these cats had pretty bad uh had some pretty serious health issues you know like some cats were born with real you know uh thinning fur they didn't have like as 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 a healthy fur coat you know as like a normal cat would they had uh real slow reflex time they were very uh they slept a lot they had no energy uh and again it was noticed 
in proportion to the amount of denatured food. So the more denatured food that the parent cat got, the more fucked up the kid cat was. But then where they really saw it was in the third generation, because not only was the third generation of the more denatured food original generation cats... <laughs> what am I trying to say here? The more that the... Denate that the original generation of cats had the denatured food, the more fucked up that the third generation was. Not only that, what they found was that the third generation of cats could not reproduce. So what ends up happening is, to correct this, the Pottinger starts giving all the cats regular, you know, raw milk, raw meat diets, and then they were able to actually fix this back up. It took four generations to get back to pretty much perfect cat health. So the reason I'm leading into this podcast with this study is because what this study shows is the actual degeneration that happens over time, over multiple generations of cats. And essentially, this is kind of what you're seeing now in the human population. So you know, now today we're dealing with, I mean, just obesity in epic proportions. We're dealing with autoimmune diseases. We're dealing with autism. We're dealing with, I mean, mental health issues. So many mental health issues in people. And everybody has their, everybody has their theory. You know, it's the chemical imbalance. It's, you know, my genes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you can't deny that what Pottinger observed in those cats, you're actually seeing in human population. 